Hey, mate. How are ya? Hey, Dan. Did you see it? Make a collab? Yeah, yeah, mate. I am king. What are you thinking, mate? What do we do? Well, we probably can't do a globe. How about Simpsons? What do you reckon about, like, fantasy something, Witcher-esque? How about Neighbours? Home and Away? I like the Aussie thing. Captain Kim? I don't know. What can we do, mate? I've got no idea. We got it, buddy. Yes, yes, that's the one. How are we gonna split this thing in half? So the theme for the Maker Collab this year is inspired by a TV show. And our TV show is the iconic Louie. We're attacking it with segments. And as you can see here, it's been a while since I've done segmented turning. It's been a while since so I'm backwards. The last time I did it was for Scotty's mallet challenge where I made this segmented mallet from a lot of segments and rainbow wood veneers. So this is a lot more segments than that mallet. If we make enough segments, we can make a whole torso for our mate Louie. So our plan, Dan's doing the bottom half. All the limbs, movable pieces, and the bottom half of the torso. And I'm in charge of the top half, the face, the ears, and finally working out how to mount this thing to take a nice photo to win the Maker Collab. Now the segments are a key part to this whole bluey. But I reckon capturing the face and feeling the emotion coming through the wood into the viewer's eyes is what's really going to win this Maker Collab for us. We conducted a lot of research on how to get her face just right. Being an Aussie team in a mainly North American competition, we needed to put our Aussie spin on it. And I'm pretty sure the number one show watched in both our homes is Bluey. It's one of those shows you don't even need to be a kid to watch. Oh, oh. It'll be your day. The themes the show tackles are so big picture that they even fly over my head sometimes. First of all, the episodes are like seven minutes long, which is perfect for my short attention span. And in a world of 60 minute marathon episodes, it's a cinematic masterpiece. The episodes are scary relatable. Things from my own childhood are referenced from being attacked by magpies to watching State of Origin Deciders with friends and family to a simple game of Keepy Uppy. We all went through this when we were growing up. It jogs our memories and imaginations and makes us feel warm and gooey inside. It starts to infiltrate your everyday life. Anyway, enough bluey talk. All the segments need to be glued together into a giant cylinder. And like I said before, Dan has done half of this already and I'm making my half now. It was pretty easy to do, but the hard part's gluing both halves together and turning one giant torso together. In Dan's little care package here, I've got his half, the torso and arms and legs with some pivoting knees and joints, which is awesome. So I've got to put a base on Bluey's head. I'm using some timber and let's go through that process super quickly. Marking, chopping, planing, Hello. Ripping. Chopping again. And gluing it together. A portion of it round so it's easier to turn on the lathe. And while I was waiting for all my layers to glue together, I was able to get Dan's mounted, squared up and ready to glue my section to his section. If you can't tell, it was Dan's first time turning something on the lathe. He did alright for a beginner, and I love it when people have a crack at doing new things. Good on you, mate. I was low-key crappy my Dax turning this guy. Took it nice and slow. It took nearly an hour just to get it all cleaned up, ready to glue my part on here. At this point, blue is about half a meter long. And if you Imperial people, Google it. Get on track with the rest of the world, will ya? I never actually know what to talk about in these videos or if people even want to hear me talk over them but a build like this doesn't have much technical aspect apart from the segmented rings. I try to make my videos a little bit educational at parts, see if someone can take a technique or a process that I've done and use it in their own woodworking.
The process was more of an artistic sculpture build where I started with clumps of wood and then shaped them into facial features resembling bluey. Lots and lots of sanding, testing, sanding, testing, sanding, testing, sanding, and being excited when I was able to move on to the next one. I was able to use a laser cutter and make some templates for some facial features and then use that to cut them out of solid wood so everything had a 3D effect to it. Now this is the part of the build I was dreading the most, matching Bluey to that right shade of blue for different parts of her body and ears and legs and everything. I tried inks, dyes, stains, but in the end the thing that worked the best was watered down food colouring from a grocery store until I got the right shade of blue that I needed. And for those dark spots, Dan came up with adding a few drops of India ink into the dye, and I'll tell you what, doesn't look too bad. The difference between staining or dyeing rather than painting was the amount of control I have or you actually don't have. The dye would actually run, especially being a round object, so I had to be quick in doing it. Using clear packing tape actually worked the best for taping off the different areas. It didn't bleed into it too much and the parts it did I was able to cover with the nose, eyes, eyebrows and whatever. At this point it felt like I had a lot to do still but realised everything was done. It's time to actually assemble everything together. Glue, hidden nails, tape, clamps, whatever I had to do to make it all stick down and work. Each little feature that went on felt like I was watching my little baby grow up and learn new things. Like seeing things, hearing things, smelling, sniffing. She was really growing up into a full grown puppy. A few more finishing touches to do, then I could assemble the arms and legs, and of course, add our touches to it. I finally got my own Toy Story moment where I got to add my name to the bottom of a toy. The processes in this build were you've only got one shot at it because you are not building another cylinder. Like drilling holes all over Bluey's body for arms and legs and tails. I put a nice clear coat to protect her. A bit worrying watching some of the water based poly potentially make the food colouring run, but we were good. It can't actually stand up on its own. The pivoting bridle joints are awesome, but gives Bluey some unsupported weak knees with a grade 3 meniscus tear, which meant I had to make a base to support this 10 kilo, 900 millimeter life size dog, child, puppy thing. I couldn't resist giving Bluey a little hug and a dance when it started coming together like this. The only thing more iconic than the actual characters is the kiwi fruit rug she has in her bedroom. It's classic! I drew out the shapes for laser for cationing and cut the pieces out of different acrylic and painted MBF. I had a big cutout for a thick piece of clear acrylic I made for a stand that I used five minute epoxy to glue in and it looked like Bluey was standing unsupported rather than using dowels or a block of wood to hold her up. Doing challenge builds can sometimes be a bit taxing, but the collab aspect made it feel like we were part of a team, and I didn't want to let anybody down. I also made the rookie error of telling my young daughter about it, so I would get the, is Bluey ready yet daddy, every day, and that gave me more motivation that you'll know. Gentle. It got Daddy? Yes? Where's Bingo? Oh. Whether it's trying to impress your three-year-old or make a passable YouTube video or an online making competition with like-minded people, I reckon the most important thing Blue has taught us is to run your own race. 